No, I don't think Donald Trump is the Antichrist. <clears throat> However, there are some interesting points that I think make for an interesting conversation. Hello, my name is Justice Backstrom, and this is God, Guns, and Gaming. So I've got a buddy at work that is, for some reason, convinced that Donald Trump is the Antichrist. And at first I wrote it off and thought, you know, whatever, he's not the Antichrist. But there are some interesting uh, points to be made on that. In his place, a despicable person will arise on whom the honor of kingship has not been conferred, but he will come in a time of tranquility and seize the kingdom by intrigue. The Antichrist begins his reign with three and a half years of relative peace. And also the Antichrist is not originally uh, a politician, just as Donald Trump was not a originally a politician, and it says he, uh, you know, came into power through intrigue. Another way of putting that would be to say, you know, all the controversy around Donald Trump that he um, made use of to get free advertisement, basically, from the media and stuff like that. But a uh, counterpoint is maybe he's just a good leader and he is effective at using power to maintain peace. I saw one of his heads as if it had been slain, and his fatal wound was healed, and the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. Second, the Antichrist, or the beast, was mortally wounded and healed. Well, the assassination attempt at Butler, Pennsylvania, wasn't, he wasn't mortally wounded, but it was close, and it was hard to tell at first, but at the end of the day, I think most people heard he was okay before they heard he had been shot. I know, I personally saw Trump survived assassination attempt before I saw assassination attempt. So, I don't think that is a prime example of him being mortally wounded and healed. Now, from a more metaphorical sense, you could say, oh, well, his uh, political career was mortally wounded uh, at the end of his last term. And you could say that started with the riots or the COVID, and that would get you about three and a half years into his first term. Okay, well, counterpoint, that's, you're really stretching your um, metaphor of being mortally wounded there, and it's not exactly the three and a half years or 42 months or 1260 days or whatever, whatever specific uh, verse you're pointing to in that case. Seventy weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. So you are to know and discern that from the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, there will be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks and it will be built again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing, and the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary, and its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be a war. Desolations are determined, and he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week, but in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering, and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. Well, the next argument would be that he moved the embassy to Jerusalem. Okay, well, it, it does talk about um, the rebuilding of the 
the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And this was all satisfied or fulfilled uh, initially with the return from exile and the 62 weeks referred to 62 weeks of years between uh, the decree from Cyrus and then Messiah appearing and being killed and then the fall of Jerusalem in 79 AD. But most people agree that this also has uh, an end times application with the Antichrist rebuilding the temple and rebuilding Jerusalem. And you could say, oh, it's kind of like what Trump did, bringing the embassy back to Jerusalem. Okay. Well, what's the abomination of that causes of desolation in that case? I don't know. Again, there's there's a lot of pieces, but there's just too many missing pieces, in my opinion. Next is the fact that Donald Trump promises uh, peace with Israel in the Middle East. Okay, yes, but counterpoint, Israel's at war right now. The Middle East is at war right now. Anybody running for president would promise to bring uh, peace or resolution to that situation. It's kind of a no-brainer. The fact that I believe Trump actually could, just again, could just mean that he's an effective uh, leader. And he causes all, the small and the great and the rich and the poor and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. Okay, well, Trump is working with Elon now, and Elon's all on board with the brain chips and the Neuralink stuff, and well, what if that's what the mark of the beast is? Okay, so there's the, there's the you know, credit card chips or whatever that people are getting in their hands, and the AI chips that people are getting in their, or supposed to eventually get in their brains somewhere on the horizon. Okay, maybe. And certainly that's not something I'm down for, but there's no, there's not currently any proposals to mandate that as the only uh, method of buying and selling. Okay. So those are the main points and some of the counterpoints I have to them. And here are the reasons I don't think that Donald Trump is going to be the Antichrist. First of all, the elites hate him. In my reading of scripture on the end times, the there does not seem to be any significant opposition to the Antichrist rise to power. Certainly, I think the elites in that time will support his uh, rise to power, if anything. But perhaps that's just my opinion. I think wittingly or unwittingly, the elites, the, the elite class is going to support the Antichrist, you know, rise to power. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire flows out of their mouth and devours their enemies. So if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this way. These have the power to shut up the sky so that rain will not fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every plague as often as they desire. Next is the two witnesses. Who are the two witnesses in this case? There's, there's no answer to that. Now, the two witnesses are around for the three and a half years, and my, my understanding is that that's the first three and a half years of the um, tribulation, and if we're comparing that first three and a half years to Donald Trump's first term, I, I don't know who those two witnesses are. <clears throat> and I don't think there is any real answer to that from 
someone who might believe that Donald Trump is the Antichrist. I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering it, and to conquer. And another, a red horse, went out, and to him who sat on it, it was granted to take peace from the earth, that men would slay one another, and a great sword was given to him. I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand, and I heard something like a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not damage the oil and the wine. When the lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come. I looked, and behold, an ashen horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death, and Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and with famine and with pestilence and by the wild beasts of the earth. Next, what are the four horsemen? Okay, again, based on the the timelines and the way it's written in Revelation, the four horsemen come before the Antichrist again during that first three and a half years. Well, I don't see any analog for the four horsemen during Trump's first term. And there's countless other plagues that also, again, in the order it's written in the Book of Revelation, come before, I guess, the second three and a half years, and be before it goes in depth about the beast. And again, we we're talking about large swaths of the population being killed and stuff that there's just no analogy for in uh, what we've actually seen so far. Next, what about the gap? The four years of the Biden-Harris administration, I really don't see Again, I could be totally wrong on this, and timelines aren't always very clear in scripture, but I see no reason to believe that the first three and a half years of tribulation would be separated from the second and a half years by a total of four years. I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but there's, there's no evidence that that would be the case. Children, it is the last hour, and just as you heard that Antichrist is coming. Even now, Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. Now, my buddy that, um, again, believes this, he asked me, like, what if he's like a little Antichrist, the small a Antichrist? And uh, I, I just think there's no way. Like, I think Donald Trump is either, either he's a good person or he's the antichrist there's no there's no in between like because what he's done so far is so far from that the only way that he could actually be evil is if he's just been faking it this whole time and is the actual antichrist so no i don't think he's one of the little antichrists that uh john talks about Now, let's talk about supposing that I'm wrong and Donald Trump is actually the Antichrist. One, I don't think that voting for him will give you the mark of the beast automatically. So on the very, very, again, in my opinion, very, very, very small off chance that Donald Trump is the Antichrist, I personally am still going to vote for him. Again, my understanding of the mark of the beast is that it's taking it as a very like you'll know you'll know what you're doing when you take the mark of the beast i don't think it's something you'll be tricked into taking uh coerced yes but not tricked but the day of the lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and all its works will be burned up since all these things are to be destroyed in this way what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Secondly, honestly, bring it on. Like, 
if if that means that there's only three and a half more years to deal with this world, pff, bring it on. Like, one, personally, I think I'm ready for it. Two, there's just so much evil in this world that I honestly... I'm ready. I, like... I'm I'm ready for the Hellfire and Brimstone, but maybe that's not you. And then the last thing is, everybody's thought everybody was the Antichrist for the time immemorial. I mean, you talk about candidates for the Antichrist, Emperor Nero, Hitler, any one of these people that throughout history that people have thought were the Antichrist. I mean, I remember as a kid um, doing, like, math games to prove that Barack Obama was the Antichrist, and as far as I know, he wasn't. <laughs> Though if you follow some of this logic, it's probably just as likely that you know, he still is somehow, and he's going to... Anyways, point is, I don't think there's any point in assuming anyone's going to be the Antichrist anytime soon. We're not going to know the time or date. That time will come like a thief in the night uh, without any real warning. And ultimately, whether by voting for it or otherwise, like, we're called to look forward to the day and speed it's coming. And voting for someone you think is the Antichrist could be a very literal way of doing that. I don't know. Anyways. Bottom line, register to vote, make sure you're registered to vote, and regardless of anything I've said today, whether you're convinced Donald Trump is the Antichrist or whether you don't think he is, vote for the person that you actually think is going to be the best leader for this country. Don't just vote for someone because you think they're not the Antichrist, or because you think the other person is the Antichrist, and that's going to be it. Um, I apologize for my voice. I've been getting over a sore throat and stuff. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. I don't thank you all for much watching, and I will see you later. Bye.